This video is based on the assumption that the star of Bethlehem was actually Halley's Comet. This video uses science, historical records, scripture, and psychology to show that it was possible that Jesus was actually born about 12 BC. There are many theories or explanations about the truth of the Gospel of Matthew in relation to the birth of Jesus and the star of Bethlehem. Some of these rely on scripture, historical records, archaeology, astronomy, or a combination of two or more of these disciplines. In this video, a different approach is used. It begins with a choice to use a scientifically provable event as a starting point. That mathematically provable event is the appearance of Halley's Comet in 12 BC and the assumption that it is the likely inspiration for the story of the Star of Bethlehem. First, let's see if the 12 BC hypothesis is compatible with biblical scripture and historical records. This video is obviously in conflict with the most widely accepted dates for the birth of Jesus, which was sometime between 6 and 4 BC. The first scripture to consider is Matthew 2, verse 1. Quote, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. End quote. Now that reign stretched from about 37 BC until Herod's death in about 4 BC. And obviously 12 BC falls easily within the reign of King Herod. Before we go any further with dates and timelines, let's deal with the issue of accuracy. The timeline shown here is just one of many examples of justifications for specific dates. Now this video does not accept a narrow approach to selecting a specific date for any particular event. Instead, there is a recognition that there are many theories in support of many different dates. Therefore, instead of accepting one date over another, all dates are considered approximate or stated within a particular range. Matthew 2 verse 9, quote, After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. End quote. It's clear from this passage that the star moved and, of course, the Magi followed. Now, this movement is consistent with the slow movement of a comet across the sky. One of the reasons Halley's Comet is assumed to be the star of Bethlehem in this video is that it was visually much more dramatic than any of the other alternative theories which have been attempted to explain what the Star of Bethlehem really was. Admittedly, linking the Star of Bethlehem to Halley's Comet on the basis of it just being the most visually significant celestial event can be disputed. For example, the books shown here are just a very small sample of the many, many theories on this issue. Now let's turn to some of the major events in the adult life of Jesus to show that they are compatible with the Halley's Comet theory. The first of these is the start of the ministry of John the Baptist. This is based on Luke 3 verses 1 through 2. The most important reference point in the passage is, quote, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, end quote. And this was about 28 AD. Shortly after John the Baptist began his ministry, he baptized Jesus. Now, shortly after is an ambiguous time period. Uh, this is also a good example of how it's hard to pin down a specific year. For example, if John started his ministry January 1 of 28 AD, there would still be a full 12 months for Jesus to be baptized and still have his baptism occur in 28 AD. However, if John started his ministry December 31, of 28 AD, then Jesus would have had to have been baptized in 29 AD. In any case, if 29 AD is selected as the start of Jesus' ministry and he was born in 12 BC, then he would have been 41 years old at that time. After his baptism, Jesus fasted for 40 days and nights in the desert, and then he began his ministry. Luke 3, verse 23, says that Jesus was, quote, about 30 years old when he began his ministry, close quote. As we have seen, 
If Jesus was born in 12 BC, he would have been about 41 years old and not 30 years old at the start of his ministry. But this is only a problem because of a mistake made in the interpretation of the meaning of about 30. That mistake is treating a human like a number. For example, what I mean is, if the number 30 is written on a blackboard and you are asked what numbers are about 30, you would probably say 29 and 31. However, if you are asked to estimate the age of a person, the range of estimates could be very wide, depending on how good you are in making such estimates and, very importantly, the appearance of the person. Here's an example of a person who is actually 45 years old, but some people might say he looks like he's more about 30. A scripture that gives support to the theory that Jesus was about 40 and not 30 is John 8, verse 57. Jewish leaders say to Jesus, quote, you are not yet 50 years old, end quote. Now, if Jesus was about 30 years old, it would have made more sense for them to have said, you are not yet 40 years old. However, if Jesus was about 40, then saying he was not yet 50 would be the more logical choice of words. We cannot know for sure why these Jewish leaders chose to say that Jesus was not yet 50, but it's at least possible that their perception of him at that time was that he was in his 40s. One scripture says he was about 30, the other suggests he was in his 40s. These are not necessarily in conflict. It's just a difference of opinion about how someone looked at a particular point in time. We have seen that it is at least possible that the Halley's Comet theory of a 12 BC birth for Jesus is not necessarily in conflict with Scripture. A psychological analysis of the Star of Bethlehem will add additional support for this theory. Psychologically, and also logically, most people will not lie about an important event that is clearly obvious and provable. There are, of course, exceptions to this general rule, but this video assumes that this principle explains at least a part of the Gospel of Matthew. First of all, many events and details about the life of Jesus occurred in the presence of relatively few people. Therefore, a false, distorted, or enhanced account of such events could not be refuted by many people. This would be especially true if the event happened long before any story was actually written down. In contrast, if an event was witnessed by a very large number of people, and it was very significant and therefore hard to forget, it's much less likely that a false story about that event would have been created. Therefore, it seems highly likely that the star mentioned prominently in the Gospel of Matthew actually did occur. The next issue to deal with is why the behavior of Halley's Comet does not perfectly fit the description of the star in Matthew's Gospel. For example, if Halley's Comet behaved as a natural comet would, it would not have stopped directly over the birthplace of Jesus. This video recognizes that stories are often a combination of fact and fiction. Typically, a good story has a central truth that is very significant. However, over time, the telling of a story is often embellished with new details, events, drama, and the agenda or bias of the storyteller. When done well, the mythic parts of a story fit well with the truth and enhance the importance and meaning of the story. Now, in conclusion, it's very possible that in the Gospel of Matthew, there was a blending of some mythic details along with the reality of Halley's Comet to create the biblical story of the Star of Bethlehem. The following images show some of the later significant events in the life of Jesus. References will follow at the end.